the NBA All-Star Reserves have officially been released. And now we know the full roster that will be going to Atlanta on March 7th to participate in the 73rd All-Star Game. And like every year, everyone is mad and it has become a yearly tradition to discuss who got snubbed and who got gifted in appearance to the illustrious All-Star Game. It's bound to happen every year. Why? Because the league only takes 24 of the best players to the game and those that just make it don't have a big gap between the players outside the all-star table. So discussions about snubs and such are inevitable and that is exactly what we're going to be looking at today. The biggest snubs of the 2020-2021 all-star game. And guys, before we get started with the video, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. The channel is really growing right now and the likes really push the video out. So join the community. With that being said, let's get into the video. First on this list, we have Devin Booker, easily the biggest snub of this year's All-Star team. For the past couple seasons, the argument as to why Booker wasn't voted to the All-Star game was he put up good numbers on a terrible team. They were right, he would average 27 points but the Suns weren't able to eclipse 20 wins. He was always just on the cusp of being voted in. And that is why last season he made the all-star team because he was a first man up after a western all-star was injured. The Suns terrible play always held them back. But this season you can't make that excuse. The Suns are a good team. They have already eclipsed 20 wins this season. More than the number of wins the Suns had in the whole 18-19 season when Booker was first snubbed. He is playing amazing right now. Averaging 25 points and 4 assists while shooting a career 50% from the floor. That is ridiculous efficiency for a high volume shooter. Booker has also evolved his game playing with Chris Paul, learning how to play more off ball and how to manipulate defensive schemes without the ball. It's honestly a shame he wasn't selected from the get go, but I do think we'll see him at the all star game as a replacement for the injured AD. The other shocking player left off the all star team that I thought was a surefire lock is DeMontis Sabonis. This really doesn't make sense to me or a number of fans. Last season he was an all star and he has only gotten better. His points, assists, steals, blocks are all up and it's clear he has developed a more versatile game. Last season he was only shooting 25% from 3. This season that number has climbed to 35%. It's not even like the Pacers are doing bad. They're currently in the 4th spot in the Eastern Conference. He deserves a spot over players in lower seeds that are putting up identical or if not worse stats than him. Sabonis so is one of the game's best rebounders, post players and power forward. So it's sad to see that we won't be seeing him in this year's all-star game. Next we have is DeRozan. I feel like when you put on a Spurs uniform you are automatically underrated and never get the praise and recognition you deserve. DeRozan is having a monster season and people need to start putting respect on his name. He is the clear best player on the Spurs team and we need to stop treating him like an afterthought. DeRozan is still in his prime and he is still a very good player. He has the Spurs in the 6th spot with a 16 and 11 record. They are ahead of teams like the Nuggets, Warriors and Mavericks. All playoff teams last year that have superstars on their roster. So it makes sense to also give DeRozan a spot. He meets the criteria for selection. He's on a team with a good record and is having a good statistical season. He's currently averaging 20 a game with 7 assists. That's a career high and he's doing this in Pop's system. A system where it's usually really hard for a player to shine. He should be an all star and I honestly think the only reason he isn't is because where he plays. Next we have is Fred Van Fleet. The Raptors this season got off to a very rough start. 2-8. and eight. 21 games later they are back in the thick of things sitting in the 5th spot in the east. This has a lot to do with not just one player but the whole roster. See the Raptors have a lot of good players that will catch your eye but not great where you would say oh yeah he's an all star every year. Fred Van Fleet is a good player and this season he has been the Raptors best player and worth of an all star nod. He's averaging 20 points and almost 7 assists this season which are all star worthy numbers but it's more than that. Fred is a defensive menace and there's actually serious chatter of him making an all defensive team this season. He is a two way stud and should make the all star team, especially after looking at the Celtics getting two all star spots with a worse record than the Raptors. I'm not saying Fred is better than Tatum or Brown, let's not kid ourselves, he isn't. 
but the league always has these unspoken set of rules with picking all-stars. You should put up good numbers, but also be on a winning roster. This rule seen Simmons get snubbed for an appearance over Dragic, so Fred by this logic should be one. He fits the criteria, so him not being selected is a serious snub. The next player we have is Chris Middleton. This season he came into a newer role with the Bucks, playing more of a facilitator position this season. And it has not hurt his game. He's having the best statistical season of his career, averaging 20 points, 6 assists while shooting an absurd 43% from 3 point land. These are better numbers than his previous two all-star seasons. Where he falls is, the Bucks were first those two seasons he made it, and now are third. I personally don't think that should hurt him, cause that's a higher seed than where the Celtics are at. But they received two all-stars. Make it make sense. I think Middleton's snub comes down to a similar way as DeRozan. Milwaukee just doesn't get the press and recognition like other franchises, so he doesn't get as many votes from the fans, media, and coaches. Lastly, I have a number of players who I think are all-star level talents, but don't think they were snubbed this season. This is because they're either playing for terrible teams or just haven't played enough games. You know what they say, one of the greatest ability an athlete can have is availability. On this list, I have players like Trey Young, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Brandon Ingram, and Christian Wood. That's all we have for today. In the comments, tell me who you think should have been on this all-star snub team. This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball. Signing off.